Welcome everyone to the Business Propeller Masterclass. And today we are lucky enough to have one of our experts from marketing success with us. Uh, welcome, Jorge. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for having me here. I'm very excited to what we are about to share with, uh, with, with our audience. I can't wait. Just before we get started, we'll quickly go into what Business Propel is. And Business Propel is the next evolution in business assessment tools. To end view, Propel will shape <clears throat> Propel will shape your business for success, leaving no stone unturned. The ecosystem will help you assess and refine your current methods to ensure your business is operating at performing in an optimal fashion. You can make faster decisions to grow your business with the use of our experts that we call our business Propel professionals, exactly what marketing success and Jorge is. And just before we get started, my name is Philip Precis and I'm the Digital Marketing and Community Manager for Business Propel. You can read a little bit about my bio right here. We'll jump into the diagnostics that we did just before the webinar with people attending, and there's a lot of you today, so I'm very excited to have you all on. And unfortunately, we ended up with an average score of 45% of people doing the diagnostic. So marketing obviously involves getting the right product at the right price, promoted using the right message, and media sold in the right place. The closer your marketing mix matches customer needs, the greater chances of success. Of course, the business propeller diagnostic helps you understand what you need to do in order to attract that right customer for your business. And another stat that we discovered was 75% of completed reports indicated that the businesses either have informal goals set, but no basic or detailed plans, right? And you know what they say, if you don't plan, you plan to fail. One of the other statistics um, we came back with is 75% of completed reports indicated that businesses do not track their progress against their marketing plan. Again, it's scary because you don't know what is yielding results um, because there's no plan in place to support what you are doing uh, ongoing through the months. And the last stat for today, 80% of businesses who completed the diagnostics either do not use or do not measure the following marketing channels. That's SEO, surveys, and email marketing. And 100% uh, of the business who completed the diagnostic have a website, but only 50% track visitors to the website on a regular basis. So that means if you're not checking your analytics every week or sometimes every day, you're in trouble. But thank God Jorge is with us today, and we're going to discuss things you can do on your website. And if you want to do the diagnostic and you missed out before this webinar, the link below will actually take you directly to the to the to the diagnostic. It's businesspropel.com.au uh, pages webinar sign up. So you can do that at a later date. And as I said, I'd like to welcome again Jorge. Well, thank you very much, Phil. That was uh, great to know a uh, few things from business proper perspective. Also, the stats are always uh, outstanding. You know, it's always good to know what's going on out there. Uh, so let me just tell you a little bit more about myself before I get into, into the actual content that we're going to be talking over here. So um, I've been working on the digital space probably now close to six years. Uh, very passionate. I love all the customer attraction side of things, especially the, custom, the, the conversions, the systems that we can set up behind it. And, you know, with all the new stuff with Facebook chatbots and all that stuff that makes it very, very interesting. Um, and just touching base on some of the, st the stats that Phil just shared, you know, that 45% of, um, of people that are not paying attention really into the marketing and all that, that I think that's a great opportunity for, for you guys to improve, you know. Um, that's pretty much a 55% room for everyone who is in, in, in this audience to, you know, just make a move. Uh, during this 2018 and start changing things and shaping what you want it to be over the next few years to come. Um, and that's why we are here today. You know, it's uh, it's all about talking about, okay, so what's, um, what's happening during this 2018? What will be the right activities that you could focus on to be able to, you know, increase that 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 percentages and increase that um, that that feedback that we got from from our tools, and you know why not just do it again in in three or six months again? You know what's happening with with your business, your marketing again, going back into business profile and doing it again. Uh, you know, uh, just business is a never changing environment, never ending 
in changing environments. So just make sure you always keep a, um, an eye on all that stuff. And you know, with the topics that we're gonna be talking through this webinar, we are gonna be focusing on um, mainly three different things. One is uh, using the right elements is, um, that's imperative during 2018. We are gonna be uh, sharing with you uh, some elements that you need to focus on during this year and, and potentially the ones that will yield the most return uh, out of uh, whatever you're doing throughout the year. Also, uh, know your customer experience. Uh, these days, people uh, want to know what they want, to what, what would be that experience that you're gonna be building for them even before, beforehand. Uh, so it is consistent and every customer gets served in the same way. You know, it's nothing worse than going, simple example, a coffee shop. You go one day, you get one coffee, and then you go next day and you get something different. Uh, simply it's different experience. And you want to keep that consistent because that's where the business is. Um, and third, lead generation and conversion. So how we can make that happen this year and how we can make sure that you are focusing on the right elements and doing the right things onto the lead generation in the linear generation of conversion space um so let's get started so let's talk a bit about the elements and and there's, there's also some some stuff that phil wants to share as well that's yep. going to be happening in the chat box yeah there's polls right now that are going to go live so basically we just want to find out and keep things as interactive as possible so they'll be running polls as you can see to the right side of your webinar screen. So please um, answer some of those questions for us and uh, we'll use that as great feedback to know exactly what's going on in your business right now. Yeah, apart from that, I also encourage everyone to start asking questions from now. So now we are, that we are gonna start digging into the actual content, I will encourage you uh, very heavily into getting into questions and anything else. Cool, so five things that we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, there are five elements that are key in 2018. One is websites, and you may think that, uh, you know, it's the old thing that we always talk about. You need to have a website, but that's not exactly what we are going to be talking about. So um, it's, it's, it's actually something a little different. Um, then is mobile. Uh, what, how can we embrace that and make it a little bit better during this year? And also what opportunities are there? And most importantly, the vast opportunity that is there into the mobile space. Uh, third is AI. As you know, that's a big topic everywhere. So how can we use that into small businesses? That's critical to know, even if you don't do it right now. Also, uh, marketing automation. You probably heard of that buzzword over in social media or something like that, but um, we'll, we'll demystify that a little bit so you will be able to actually implement some of that into your business. Uh, and then lastly, social media advertising, why you should be doing it and you shouldn't be uh, thinking that this uh, that, that's a waste of money or if it didn't work once, doesn't mean that it's not going to work the next time. So let's get started. Website, as I was saying earlier, is not about having a website. It's about making it better, right? So the times of... Um, I need to have a website or why do you, not, do you need a website and all that, th those times are over. In reality, uh, the expectation is that you have a website. If you think about all the changes that are happening to the workplace and all that, it's all the millennials coming into place and they are the ones actually doing the admin work. In, in many cases, they are the ones searching for new suppliers, they are the ones searching for solutions for the business. They can see problems, they can see when something is not, a, automated they want everything to be automated they want everything to to be better uh from the systems perspective that the first place they're gonna go to is google and i'm not talking about seo and all that but you know you need to have a website you need to be somewhere so people can find you even if it is in a directory or your linkedin page you need to have a link where they can go to and most importantly it's about improving that experience as i was saying before it's, it's about the experience that they're gonna have uh, throughout that, that process. So some facts that I had that I had here in the screen for you is that it really takes no more than 50 milliseconds for the users to, to make an opinion about your website. And if they make an opinion about your website, more likely they're making an opinion about your business. So we need to be very careful what we put out there and make sure that it's updated as possible. 75% uh, of users admit to making judgments about the company's credibility. So again, that ties up what I just mentioned before, and it's based on the website design. So it's not even about the words or 
anything else about the website design is, uh, you know, is it modern? Is it um, hasn't changed in 10 years? That means this company is running on a 10 year technology in the back end. They're not going to be able to help me, for example. Uh, first impressions are 95% design related. Again, goes back to that 75%. Positive first impression lead to higher satisfaction and first impression can last for years. In reality, if someone goes to your website today, that doesn't mean they're going to come back tomorrow to see if, if the business has changed. They're uh, more likely they're, 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 that impression is there and they are not going to change it uh, too, too soon. So um, something to keep in mind. So the most important thing about websites is that they are a window to your business, right? So you want to show the experience, you want to show, um, you know, in this case, it's a coffee shop, happy people, you know, they come there, they have uniforms, for example, they have a really nice layout and all that stuff. So you kind of feel immersed into their environment and you potentially want to go there. Uh, and most importantly, that, cre that creates trust. So that brings us back into that important element of you getting to to know those people yeah, and people buy from um people buy from people right so it's very important that that window is show is showing your people and not only just what you do a lot of the time exactly so that brings us back feel to to the language and design you know so um that window needs to be talking to with the right language and needs to have the right design so when i'm talking about language is you know you know, five years ago, even five years ago, not too long ago, websites were all about me, 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 me. This is what I do. This is how I do it, and etc. Now, the thing has has all changed to the other side, which is more about what's in it for me from from the user perspective. They go into our website, okay, what's in it for me, rather than how these guys do it. it it's really irrelevant. It's more about the solution that you offer and how you show that for the user. Um, then it's also the design. So that's the element. Uh, that's the first element. So um, looking at your websites and all that. So the first thing is for you to start looking at the language, start looking at, uh, you know, if it's got that element of what's need for me from the, from the user's perspective and uh, making sure that that's all um, in place there. Uh, also is the design. So most importantly, as I was saying before, all our, those first impressions, they are all based on the design. So I wanted to show you just some, um, just a quick trend over here into what's uh, what's happening, right? So as I said before, it's all about them. So we their problem right away. So what's the problem of these users? So they're disorganized. For example, they don't have a web development process and etc. And they're looking for help into you know they know they need to fix it because they're getting busier. For example, so it says easily organized web development process. So that's exactly what they were looking for. Right, so that's exactly the problem they're looking to solve. It's not about we have a system that organizes web flows. No, it's about you know what's in it for me. Uh, most importantly, they have a really clear call to action, and uh, and that's that's in there. It's clear the button is clear, the, the and and all that. So it's a clear experience that they will follow. It's not cluttered at all. It's straight down. This is how you're going to fix my problem, and this is where I need to get started. Exactly. And another thing, if you notice the image that is on the side, right? So the, the two little doodles in there with the um, with a computer and all that, that's actually a custom made image and, and that it's becoming quite a, a heavy trend on websites, uh, custom made icons, custom made, um, custom made um, Im imagery and photography. Uh, people want to see what's on that business. People don't want to see stock images. And that's a big trend uh, during 2018. Stock images are okay if they are used properly. But, uh, you know, when you are talking about your team, when you are talking specific things, uh, you want to make that as custom as possible so they get to know you, they get to know your personality and all, and, and all that. So, example, uh, if you look at the four elements on the second section, right? So there's four elements in there that says organize information, manage web development projects, uh, create website structure, and plan and store content for your website. Again, there are custom made icons that really is gonna sh is showing you graphically what you're gonna be able to achieve uh, through this company. Right. So it's worth investing in a photographer to come take pictures of maybe your business or your team or yourself if you are the business. Yeah, exactly, hundred percent, hundred percent. So if you're a consultant, you want a photo of yourself in there, so people will know who are, who are they gonna be talking to. Again, that raises your profile. 
and they know, you know, when they receive a call and you say, yes, I'm, let's say it's Mike, uh, and they remember Mike from the website. So that's, that's very important. Uh, if you have a team, put the photos of the team in there so people don't think that you're alone. If you are referring to the team all the time, make sure they're, they're, they're named somewhere. Uh, so yeah, so elements like that, that you show, again, it's a window and, you know, the more customized you can make that window and the more detailed, then people will have the better opportunity to get to know you and make a decision from there. So that's some websites. So um, that brings us to, to the next element, right? So websites, we know they need to be responsive. People are using a lot more the phone. Pretty much uh, a lot of people are even running a whole business through their phones and all that. So really, ninety, I would say 99% of the time is really spent on, 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 on their phones rather than on the computer unless you have a, a really desktop-based uh, job. So mobile. Um, some stats here that are very, very, very interesting. You know, if you look at the very first one, so number one, Facebook feed read. Uh, very low read rate and very expensive marketing platform. In a way, expensive, but we'll talk a bit more about that at the end. And then is 19% 90, of people actually get to see that feed entirely. You know, you, you kind of stay, stay scrolling there for... Uh, you know, five, 10 minutes, but you never get to the end. And then when you look at it again, it's new stories. So what happens with all those ones that you miss? So unless you spend an hour, you will be able to catch up with everything. Otherwise you won't. So that's why it's 19%. Uh, number two, tweets with tweets, uh, Twitter. So that's basically, you know, not enough value. There's a lot of noise. A lot of people, um, again, spend a lot of time on it, but filters are in Twitter as well. So you can also, again, same story. Uh, people look to a lot of stories that are happening. They probably read uh, less than 22%, to be truly honest. Uh, that means that they were seen or read the Twitter, the tweet itself, but how many people actually click through, I would say that's even lower. This uh, tweet, Twitter is a great source of information and news and to kind of uh, create content curation sources and all that. But to be able to get from there to a transaction um, is, is a bit more complex. So email marketing, you know, we all love email. We all know that we need to have a database. Uh, even if you are not using, uh, using it or have one, I'm pretty sure you know that you need to have one. And if you didn't know, I would suggest you start building it. Mm -hmm. um, so email marketing, you know, it's 29% open rates and that's uh that's on a high on the high end in reality uh industry standards are really um on the lower end probably between 17 percent to 29 percent if we give it a range it's interesting to see uh, we're talking about mobile and we haven't even mentioned calls because let's face it no one likes talking to people anymore right yeah, that's right. We, we actually were having a conversation this morning with Phil about, about having phone calls and, and all that. There's a lot of people still like to call to the business, but there's also a, a big trend into the business owner uh, being, you know, delegating things to the team and also being a solopreneur, for example. So they can be picking up every single phone call. Um, that's where, um, you know, things like AI, marketing automation, all that will come in place, we'll, 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 we'll be talking uh, further down the presentation, but what where we are going with the email marketing stats and all that is just look at the SMS marketing rates. Um, there's a lot of people that rely on SMS and prefer SMS rather than a phone call. Um, this is a, a personal opinion, but I can see that it's, it's a lot less people on the phone calling and having conversations and a lot more people texting. Um, you know, 98% of uh, an SMS that is sent is read within three minutes. So it's low cost, it's high conversion, and people will, will actually see it and take an action from it. It's like, you know, when, when these days when you go to, um, to order something from platforms like uh, food platforms, you know, like, um, like all these places that you can order from several restaurants and all that, uh, the first thing they ask you is, do you want notifications? because those are the first things that you actually see, SMS notifications and, and stuff like that, because you actually read them rather than an email. So how do you get to do this? And you know, it's, um, 
is we probably have a lot of phone numbers in our phones. We actually uh, never use them or we just ring people when we need to. It's like our contact list and it's a bit of a Rolodex. Probably you have a lot of people into those contacts. We were talking about photographers. I'm pretty sure you look into your contacts and you will have met one sometime before or you can call someone who can refer you to someone and all that stuff, right? So this, the, we all have phone numbers, but it's mobile numbers. How can we start using them? So first of all, you want to start uh, backing up that data. So there are platforms out there. There's one uh, particular app called Full Contact that you could apply, uh, that you could download and put it on your phone. It's free and the paid version is very inexpensive as well. It's like something like $100 a year or something like that. And it actually connects to your phone and it captures all that data. Basically, it, it organizes your contacts into a cloud-based platform that you can display this and that you can later start using for something different, right? So, um, and then you can download that data and then you can connect it to LinkedIn and validate the data. And there's a lot of uh, data, that, that are crunching that happens in the back end, but that will definitely clean up that data and would allow you to start getting that those mobile numbers in place, right? Uh, second, uh, SMS is not about, I want to I want to say this before, before I, I talk about um, step number two, three and four. Uh, basically, SMS, I'm not talking about uh, you sending a manual SMS to a client or you sending a, a manual SMS to a, to, a, to, a, to a potential or anything. It's actually using the database and doing a, uh, what we call an email blast. Think of an email blast, but on, on, S, on mobile numbers, right? So you send a large amount of SMSs with the same text at the same time. So I'm going to show you something on the next slide, and I'm going to come back again to the following steps so you understand what we are talking about. This is an example of a business sending an SMS to, to a large database of contacts, right? So there are sushi businesses, there are restaurants, and they are saying, are you hungry? Come in today before 7 p.m. Show this text message for half-price sushi, right? And that's at 3.15 in the afternoon. So you will have pretty much four hours or three and a half hours for you to actually plan yourself to go to this place to get sushi, right? So that's what we are talking about. We are talking about SMS blasts to your database without a specific intent. So that that's where I'm talking about here. Step number two, strategize your SMS offers, right? So you want to make sure those offers are strategized and you have a particular um, action that you want to take, that you want them to take. And you can also tie up return investment to, the, to that particular action as well. So you will know, I, for example, that restaurant, they send that SMS, they will know exactly how many people will come back with that code. Uh, so they can say, well, you know, we send it to 500 people, 100 came in uh, and they actually purchased something, you know, so they can calculate what that conversion was. So it's, again, it's highly trackable as anything else online. Uh, it's just not widely used. Uh, step number three, write good SMS copy and make sure that it is not too long, it's really short. And so remember, we only have 160 characters, similar to Twitter. Uh, we just we just used to write really long SMSs because phones, they don't stop you anymore of doing that. But back in the day, uh, you used to write a text and it will actually break it in two. So the other person will receive two, te two text messages but now they just see it in one because it's more web-based and all that stuff. But it, you need to keep it as short as possible and with a call to action within it. Um, and lastly, find a provider, right? So let's just, I'm just gonna show you this example once again. So, you're, so you think of that and how can you use this for your business? You know, what would be the right opportunity for you to be able to, um, to start using that for your business? And, you know, most importantly, you know, I. I in my opinion, you should start capturing that data right away and start thinking of opportunities like this. For example, you have a webinar, you can send a text message for everyone, letting them know that you have a webinar. Uh, let's say another example, uh, tax accountants, right? You know, it's the end of the year, the end of the financial year, and everyone needs to do their taxes or every business needs to do their tax before um, April, I believe it is, and all that. You know, there's all these milestones that you need people to take. Um, you send an email, 20% read, read that email, uh, you probably got some return out of that, which is great, but how many people will read the SMS? Again, 98%, so you know, more chances of, of, of success. 
So some examples for you out there, you start thinking of some strategies and, and opportunities that will lie for you in your business. So I was doing some research and some platforms that we, we could potentially, that you could, guys could potentially use. Is here in Australia, there's one called wholesale SMS, click send SMS broadcast, direct SMS, SMS tech. Um, this is just, you know, just sample. I'm pretty sure there's a, a lot more platforms out there. Um, but, you know, some of them are actually very cheap. And, you know, some of them, they have a big virtual number, what is called a virtual number, basically, that are actually a reply platform. So people can go back and actually reply to that text message. It's not one of those no reply platforms that go nowhere. Um, and then, so so you kind of start working with uh, with those things. And, you know, some of them are very, very inexpensive. You can just buy credits even. You don't, it's not even one of those subscriptions models that you need to go and pay every month and then you don't use it. Uh, you can just uh, buy credits and then you use them uh, whenever you like. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity. Uh, not many businesses are, use it, is, uh, are using it. It's less crowded than Facebook, social media and whatnot. We'll be talking about that as well at the end. So about being cr a crowded marketplace. Um, but, you know, you're going direct. Um, that's something that I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer on and it's uh, direct response marketing. If you don't know what it is, um, and, and if you haven't heard of it, it's basically just doing marketing with our intent and getting a, a correct response out of it that you can track. That's really what it is. And SMS is, uh, is just a great opportunity to do that. Cool. AI, artificial intelligence. A bit of an interesting topic right now. Everyone's talking about AI. It's one of those new uh, buzzwords that's everywhere and trying to scare everyone that they're losing their jobs and robots are going to take over. What are you going to talk about, Jorge? Yeah, well, that's true. But in reality, robots is not business, business artificial intelligence. You know, people think, oh, you know, I will never get onto that because I need to go and build a robot. I don't have resources and time to do that. And probably no one has. You know, that's why there's um, certain people that they spend their life doing it. And so luckily enough, we don't have to do that because the reality of uh, business artificial intelligence is in our is, is in our in our hands. And clear example is Facebook bots, right? They are artificial intelligence on, on their own right that you can program and they will work in the back end of your business, right? So um, that's, that's a great opportunities. Of, um, of things that you could do with that. You know, it's simple to implement. Again, goes back to understanding that, um, that customer experience. So you know what to ask. So you can program that robot into the next step. Um, and so you can actually offer, offer, offer information on that. You know, a robot is nothing else than a computer that you need, computer program that you need to, to tell it what to do. And uh, luckily enough, you don't even need to know programming anymore either. So it's something that you could really implement uh, quite quickly, quite fast, and then you wouldn't have, um, you know, you don't need, it's not rocket science, literally. Uh, probably it was a few years back, but it's not anymore. So uh, we also have an example over here that we were using internally for the Business Propel webinar chatbot. Yeah, so basically for this webinar, uh, we thought, uh, you know, practice what we preach. So we created a quick chat bot. So if you go to our Business Propel Facebook page and you can uh, like that page and when you end up, um, you can message the page and you can literally register uh, uh, register for a webinar and our future webinars just by talking to the chat box. You say, get started, ask you a few questions and it literally signs you up to the webinar. And um, as you can see, Jorge's picture there, it, um, it, it confirms that you're signed up and you're ready to go. And that's something I think that took us uh, under 35 minutes to create. And uh, we had a lot of interest and a lot of signups just from the, uh, the messenger bot on Facebook. Exactly. So, um, you know, that allows us to, to create a different environment, you know, uh, and that tells a lot about what your business is. Again, uh, you know, going back to that web design, going back to all that. So you can use a tool like this to drive people back into your, in, into your website and to drive people back into, into getting interaction. That's the main thing. That's what people really want these days. As we were saying, you know, people want to call someone to talk to someone. Well, why you, don't you create a bot that they can talk to? Yeah, and we named the bot Tina, by the way. <laughs> Which is a very nice name. 
you can you can give them names definitely for sure and you know it's is never you, you can never have enough you know in a way so you can always create several bots for several uh, opportunities uh, that they can just talk to people while, while while you are there they qualify them before you actually get to talk to them you know which is one of the things that we we'll mention uh, that we'll talk about in the next in the next element which is marketing automation qualifying and all that but that's basically this is in reality these days chatbots are, are an element of marketing automation on mm -hmm. its own yeah i just separated it out because it's a different um it's a different topic on, on this on, on this webinar but in reality is part of marketing automation cool so you will think okay so i don't need to do programming you said you didn't need to do programming you said you don't have to do all this and all that well I'm going to give you uh, here a website that I really like. It's called Chatbot Tutorial. Uh, in there, you can do two things. One, learn on your own if you wanted to. Or two, you can you can build one. They will teach you how to build one or they will build one for you even if you don't have the time. But remember one thing. You can't tell someone to build something if you don't know what you want to be built. Right? So you need to work on that experience. You need to know that those steps that you want the bot to follow. And then they will build it for you as Phil said you know it was 35 minutes because they knew what they wanted so um so just keep that in mind always keep that in mind cool uh the next element so this is marketing automation which has been a buzzword for probably what two years now yeah um at least at least yeah so it's been always at the back of everything but uh, it's just popping up a bit more and more over the last couple of years as, as the technology becomes more available. You know, that's always the case. Something is very difficult until suddenly something is released to market and makes it easier. Um, and cheaper too. Definitely, definitely. So marketing automation, uh, I've got some stats here for you. So it drives a 14.5% uh, increase in sales productivity and a 12.2% reduction in marketing overhead. So this is from, um, from, from research done in the US. So if you think about this, right? You may think, but oh, it's very hard to implement. It's very hard to to do and all that. But it's one of those things that is not again. It's not that hard as soon as you know what you want. You just need to have that clear picture of what you the experience that you want to create, and then it will be very easy to create. Most importantly, if you are a a, a, a solopreneur, right, and then you're wearing the hats as many business owners, even you are not solopreneurs, you are wearing the hats of sales. Uh, you're wearing the hats of marketing, you're wearing the hats of operations, you're wearing all these different hats, even if you don't want to, and you have stuff, you still get questions and you still get a uh, few things going on. So if you think of that, thinking of that, let's say you're just doing uh, business owner work plus sales and marketing. So that would be 26%, sorry, that would be yeah, like 27% reduction on, on your time spent on this. So that means you have 28% more time 27%, 28% more time to go on sale. Uh, so it's something to think about and to keep in mind. Uh, so 43%, so on another stat, 43% of companies uh, using marketing automation have been doing it for, for, for so or uh, four years or so. So if you think of um, of these 43 companies and the research was done around what sort of companies, there were there were slightly big companies, but if you think of small businesses, uh, we are not even touching that. 43%. I mean, it's, 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 there's really a lot of opportunity for you to be ahead of your competitor. Just imagine if you create, if you set up marketing automation this year and your competitor hasn't even started looking into it, right? So that means it will give you a competitive advantage that you can uh, take on to market. Yeah. And as we as we said before, um, the, the price of marketing automation software has come down considerably. So you would start off, I remember marketing automation software used to cost $5,000 a month. And now there's marketing auto automation software that sometimes comes with your email software, right? And the price could be anywhere between $35 to $65. Uh, dollars just to as a starting point for a small business and and one of the things with small business if you can as you're going to go through if you can automate some of the first steps of the process it will save the owner the marketing person or you know the, the wife doing um, the paperwork uh, in the afternoon and marketing uh, a lot of time definitely definitely so um this is slide over here you know one of the main things with marketing automation and and your focus is always about identifying whole leads and making sure that you can offer that solution as quick as possible. 
So it's not about creating these massive journeys. It's not about creating, um, yes, you can. You can get as complex as you want. But the first initial and the most important objective, and that can never uh, be uh, blurred by anything else, is about identifying how leads and offering a solution to the problems faster than new competitors. So how we how we go about marketing automation, right? So we were saying it's, it's not as difficult anymore. There's a lot of platforms out there and all that. So the easiest, simple step is just to start with one system, your cell systems, right? So just if, if you can implement it, implement that on that particular point in, in, in place, then you will be able to hire a salesperson, for example, if you don't have one. If you have one, you will make that life a lot easier because, and also your life because you will know where that is at. Everyone knows that sales sales is the most important part of the business. If there's no sales, there's no clients. There's no clients, there's no business, right? So um, always keep that in mind. So first of all, starting with a CRM system. So a CRM system is just a simple platform that you could just put data into it, just start creating the new database. We were talking about SMSs that in the CRM, it's got all that data that we are capturing in all these different places on your phone online, uh, the app that I mentioned, full contact is connected into it, all the leads that are coming from the chat box that you potentially um, are going to be creating, all those leads coming from all these different places, they just come to this centralized place uh, where you process them and you make sure that you offer that solution as soon as possible. Um, so start with that. Start setting up a simple CRM system. I'm gonna uh, system. I'm gonna jump ahead and then I'll, go, I'll get back to it. So I show you some of the systems. Um, Insidely is uh, pretty much a free platform. I think you pay on contacts, if I'm not wrong, and then over time you'll end up, end up paying like probably $9 uh, US, and probably $15 a month or something like that. Very affordable. Yeah, and it's not a, a too bad platform. I think it's, it does the job. Uh, HubSpot CRM is entirely free. Uh, again, it's a platform where you can just get yourself organized, get that sales process happening and all that. Uh, Capsule CRM, very easy to use. They just revamped all their um, or the or, or the user interface and all that. So it's very easy to use, very easy to implement, um, and also very um, very reliable. That's one of the main things. You one of these of these platforms that are reliable and they, they give you back your data. That's the main thing. Uh, that's uh, I think that it starts about ten dollars a month or something. Again, very inexpensive for the value that you get of having all that data in one place and being able to to see. Uh, where your pipeline is at and making decisions. And then another one is Pipedrive. So that, that's more in the higher end, but Pipedrive uh, has got a lot of uh, other elements that you can use as well, like routing. You can plan your day. You have a map in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I will give you points if, you've, if you are on the road all the time and visiting clients and stuff like that. So it gives you actually a roadmap of uh, where you want to go next, where are these guys, and you can actually plan by distance uh, who are you going to meet next and all that. Uh, it's a great platform, great opportunity for those who are a bit more, uh, to have a, a bit more of a complex uh, um, system. And the reporting is amazing. So if you're a bit of a data data, data person, definitely Pipedrive is one of the best uh, platforms out there in terms of sales reporting and, and pipeline reporting. Yeah, and you can see, and you can assign things to a sales team too, like with everything, but Pipedrive is exceptionally good product for uh, pushing sales teams, uh, assigning leads to them, you know, wherever you get the leads, be Facebook, your website, your SMS marketing. Uh, yeah, it's more of a full solution product, especially with sales. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you have a, a small team or you have a, a big team, it, it doesn't matter really. If you are working with more than one person, Pipedrive would be a, a great platform for you. Cool. So secondly, uh, you know, you have the platform. Let's say you go and select one of those CRMs or marketing automation platforms, which we we'll, we'll share. Some of the marketing automation platforms also have a CRM built in. So it's something for you to keep, me, keep in mind. Um, but the most important thing is documenting your sales process. So what happens after that lead is, is generated from the website? Do you contact them? Someone gives them a call? Do you set up a time with them? Uh, what's going to happen, right? So that's that's the most important thing. And then, you know, create a, a lead management process. So again, it's documenting that sales process and making sure you follow up on time, you create those, those lead, do, do, you follow up with either emails or um, or tasks, or you allocate that to, to someone within your team. So that's important, documenting that process. Again, you need to know what you want to be able to make the system work 
uh, many times when you implement a system, it's not about the system. It was about what you put into it, uh, why it didn't work. Okay, just make sure that, um, that that process is in place. And again, if the process is too complex, and then probably it's the system fault that you couldn't manage it and, 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 and you couldn't. Uh, you do what you wanted to do, so you need to go into more uh, robust systems, which uh, could be mass ma marketing automation platforms. For example, Active Campaign. Active Campaign has got a um, CRM portion into it. It probably doesn't get to the complexity of pipe drive. So if, if you're really uh, managing big sales teams and all that, probably you want pipe drive instead. But if you're managing simple sales process and simple lead management and lead scoring and all that, Active Campaign is a, is, is a good platform. Um, Act on, so that's a different one. Um, you know, HubSpot, you probably all got, uh, all have heard of it. It's a very big big, big platform. It's like a only, only one. Marketo is more of a, Marketo and Eloqua, they are more of an <clears throat> enterprise level platforms. Uh, but then Infusionsoft is also into the SME space. Um, a bit more complex to understand. You probably need someone specialized to, to set it up for you but will definitely uh, help you as well as, as achieving what you need to achieve with the platform. Cool. I guess uh, our last point is social media advertising. You know what's going on at that end. You know, you probably heard, think you've heard it all about social media advertising. That's a lot of people doing a lot of ads on uh, Facebook ads. You know, we come and help you and we'll do this for you and we'll help you do certain things. And the reason is simple. If you see these stats, is 94% of people are on Facebook. Uh, so everyone knows, and especially those running agencies, uh, that there uh, is a big opportunity to reach uh, all the markets, right? Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about Google+. Plus. You know, you can see only 10% of people actually use it, uh, and that's entirely true. And the only reason for that is just for SEO purposes and reality. So it's a, it's a platform from Google. So it's definitely um, worth looking into it from the SEO perspective. So, yeah, pretty much everyone is on Facebook, right? Um, so Mark Zuckerberg, he did an announcement earlier this year that pretty much is changing the whole game within the, the social media advertising sort of things. It's actually making it very exciting, I would say. Uh, some people would say it's going to make it very um, challenging, but I think it's, it's interesting and it's going to be exciting what is about to happen. So basically he's removing or he's starting to remove a lot of content and posts from businesses and businesses pages and all that and just pretty much focusing more into the personal relationships that you have with with people right so um, that's a way of saying uh that he's gonna be rolling uh more people for more opportunities for advertisers right so in reality what you need to do now and start doing now is start thinking about at least is to start spending some money on facebook to be able to reach those audiences so uh, back in the day, it was all about creating content, right? Going into the Facebook page, putting two or three posts a week, and then you're, you're good, you're fine. As soon as you generate likes and engage, and people are going to engage with it, and you know, putting uh, cats pictures and all that, people are going to like them, and then they're going to see your posts. The truth is uh, that's not the case anymore. So Facebook uh, is putting it in a way that if you are a business, you have money to invest to reach my audience, and they, they're, they're switching it into it's not about if they're engaged with you or not is is Facebook audience, and then you you are starting you you really need to pay for it. So that's basically what it comes down to. And that has nothing to do about the share price, right? No, nothing <laughs> at all. Nothing at all. It's it's all about the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so um, most businesses, so the opportunity, right? So most people are gonna say, oh no, well I'm not gonna put more money into this because it's just gonna get too complex, and you know I'm not gonna waste my time and money. But the truth is. That's where the opportunity gets created because a lot of people are really backing off um, from there, which means it's less competition for you. As you know, um, you know you're paying for the competition of people trying to reach the same audience as well as the target of the audience. So um, think about that. It's definitely less competition, and that's that's opportunity. So that means it's going to be a less crowded market, right? Which could potentially lead, with, as it was at the beginning, uh, cheaper ads. The beginning we were paying what fifty cents per click. Or 20 cents per click, probably 10 cents even per click, probably five years ago. Yeah. Uh, now you are paying uh, two, three dollars, five dollars a click sometimes, depending on the engagement. So um, you know, it's a great opportunity for those who who are willing to 
to look into this and definitely invest a, a bit of money of your marketing budget. If you don't have one, start creating one because you are going to need it. Uh, you know, with the right strategy and approach, we, we, this could definitely be a great opportunity for you. There's a lot of new opportunities into Facebook Messenger, for example, uh, advertising within the Messenger, as well as the chatbots. So, you know, something that that, that will be out there at some point, you know, it's, it's having your advertising so the chatbot actually talk to them and they make the, the lead for you. So there's a lot of opportunities on, on that end. Definitely worth looking into your budget before you can you, you 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 do anything else start looking to the budget and create it so if there's one action that you want to take in social media advertising and you have you have not have a budget yet just create one that will be your action and, it, and it's a good idea because we're we're going to territory where some people have never done before and this is all new to them um and obviously at the end of this webinar i think we're going to offer people a 30 minute um, opportunity to talk to someone marketing success and this could be one of the topics that you can talk to people um, they can call up marketing success and actually talk about if this is digging down a hole that you've never heard of before yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and you know this this slide over here um, is just a sample of how deep you can get into creating an audience that is right for your business right so because facebook works all about audiences uh, it's all about creating that target market and that person that you wanna that you wanna reach within the platform, and it, and you know it tells you about likes, interests, cities, countries, connection, languages. You can go down to, for example, let's say you're a coffee shop. You can put your address in there and tell it, and create an ad for anyone with that two, three, or four case around you that you know that can walk in into your shop. So you can get to that granular level of uh, creating those really, really targeted ads uh, for your audience. OK, so um, I one of the things that I wanted to do about this presentation, I know I know there was uh, a bit of content going through and some 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 things uh, probably are you not need a lot more deeper thought uh, for you guys. And I do understand that. But one of the things that I want to do is just create a practical checklist in a way for you to take away out of this webinar. And you know, if, if you take these five actions out of this, uh, you will have a solid plan for what to do uh, over the next over the next um, nine months left, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not yeah, nine, 10 months. Uh, yeah, almost uh, March. <laughs> almost March, so pretty much uh, nine, 10 months uh, left of this year. Cool, so first of all, start, start with the website review. And, and redesign it if that's the case. You know, if you have a website older than three years, potentially it depends what sort of uh, company you used to create it, probably needs a review. Um, run Facebook campaigns, even if you are just boosting uh, a post here and there into Facebook, and you know, even if you just have like um, $100, $200, $500 budget for Facebook, start using it. Because uh, if they don't see you using it, they're probably paying a lot, penalize you later. So start using it, start boosting, start doing things um, on Facebook. Uh, even again, even if it is just little things, uh, little things over time, they, they could be big things. Um, third, start capturing data centrally. If you don't have a CRM, if you don't have a CRM, uh, a CRM or a database, or you are all in spreadsheets, um, start using a system because you can, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, it depends what system you are using connect the spreadsheets into other cloud platforms uh, and you won't be able to get as much data as you could potentially get out of um, out of having a proper CRM in place. Um, fourth, document your sales process. Again, that customer experience that you take people through, they come to my website, they talk to my bot, I ask them several questions and then, you know, from there I, uh, I give them a call, just create that process, simple process, bullet points, so at least you can instruct someone uh, that is not you to be able to do it because unless you are technical, uh, this could be a bit challenging for some people. But if, if it is an action for yourself only, just focus on those bullet points. Um, and then lastly, you know, automation and AI. So that's what I was saying. Delegation, try to find someone who can help you with that. If you are not technical, if you are technical, uh, think about your time as well, unless just it's worth of you learning and it's a desire of you, it won't probably be wise to spend time on doing things like this uh, that are technical. Uh, yes, it could help your business, but unless you are keen to learn, 
uh, it may take you longer to, to get it rolled out of what it could if you just um, hire an expert to, to get it done. Excellent. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for listening to all that. So um, I think uh, we may have some questions through the chat. So we're probably going to read some of those out loud and we'll, we'll answer them. Cool. We so actually, uh, just because we're, we're, we are running out of time, unfortunately, I'm going to get kicked out of our offices at any moment. What we are going to do is uh, we're going to respond to any chat, any messages um, separately. So when we send you the webinar replay, we'll have a little section on at, at the bottom with the with anyone asking questions and Jorge uh, responding. Um, as I mentioned previously, uh, just a few slides ago, uh, Marketing Success has been nice enough to offer us a free 30-minute review uh, of your of your business and your marketing. So uh, if you take the time right now, if you are interested, send us a message in the chat box. Uh, promise it's not a bot. Uh, you're talking to a human being. Um, and basically, we'll take your details down and we'll contact you during the week in order to organize a time that we can book in a 30-minute meeting. And let's not forget, you can also contact Marketing Success directly on Business Propel's website under the consultant page. It's under Marketing Success. There is a URL there for you. And please don't forget that we have our next webinar coming up for the priorities, uh, Prioritize Your Finance Functions for Profit. So that's in mid-March. I would love to see you there. We have another Business Propel expert uh, that you guys would love the webinar. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. And I appreciate uh, appreciate uh, you guys being on the webinar, especially during lunch. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, guys.